Hi everybody, this is Margie from DQ Family Travel and I'm here to share our family's National Parks road trip out west. This two-week road trip started and ended in Minneapolis and went through South Dakota, Wyoming, Montana, and North Dakota. Follow along and see all of our stops. For our adventure west, we rented a 14-passenger Sprinter van. It was nine of us total, so we used the extra space for luggage, cooler, and snacks. Our two families loved the space and views of the landscape from the huge windows. It was the perfect road trip van. Our kids were really excited at the start of the trip. Our first day was a full day of driving from Minneapolis to South Dakota. It was a pretty boring drive, not much to see along the way, and basically all day into the night. We stopped for meals, coffee, gas, and bathroom, but that's pretty much it until we reached the Rapid City area in South Dakota. Today would be our first day of actual stops, and the first one was a big one, Mount Rushmore. I had always heard mixed reviews, but I was truly impressed. The engineering, the craftsmanship, it was really better than I thought. We explored the visitor center, which I found extremely informative. The exhibits were fascinating because they showed how the faces were carved and their sheer size of each part. We should have taken one of the hikes, but we really had to get moving. We found our states in the Avenue of the Flags and headed towards Wyoming. On our way, we saw the Crazy Horse Memorial still under construction and had a quick picnic in the Black Hills before crossing the state line. The scenery was pretty nice on this section. We stopped in Casper, Wyoming and visited the Tate Geological Museum. It had great reviews. It was small but jam-packed with fossils and informative exhibits about the area. I highly recommend a stop here if you have young kids. The scenery became spectacular as we approached Jackson. Jackson, Wyoming is a cute western town right next to Grand Teton National Park. Here there are many restaurants, shops, and is a very walkable downtown. Love the area. There are many options for accommodations here, but we chose the Cowboy Village Resort. There were a lot of small cabins with full kitchens, two queen bunk beds, and a bathroom. Perfect for families. Grand Teton National Park was stunning. While we were only here for one day, these mountain majesties were among the best landscapes I've ever seen. We took a gentle three mile loop around Jackson Lake and I had to stop many times to take in all of the beauty. Mountains and lakes are my two favorite types of scenery and I absolutely love this trail. We had scheduled a whitewater rafting trip in the afternoon and I'm glad we did because it ended up being the highlight of the trip. The kids and adults had a blast navigating the rapids, enjoying the views, and laughing hysterically when we were soaked in the frigid water. Yellowstone National Park. We allotted two days to visit the oldest national park in the country and it was definitely not enough time. The geothermal activity was unlike anything I'd ever witnessed and besides the awful sulfur smell, everyone was marveling at the geologic wonder. Grand Prismatic Spring is among the most popular photo spots in the park, and the array of colors clearly explain why. There are other natural geothermal pools in the area that make this part of the park extremely crowded. The mud volcano area was very strange, but cool to see the boiling mud and steam come out of the caves. Driving around Yellowstone provided us some pretty nice views of the park and wildlife. We saw plenty of deer, elk, bison, and yes, we even had one walk right past us. The Grand Canyon of Yellowstone was another gorgeous area of the park. We decided on a short but steep hike and descent into the brink of the lower falls. The power of the water was incredible and the views from the bottom and the top were quite memorable.
The drive towards the northern section of the park was quite different. The crowds lessened and the space opened up. It felt as if we had entered another planet when we took the boardwalks to see the Mammoth Hot Springs area. These colorful terraces are near the Montana border and the town of Gardner. I highly recommend a visit for lunch, shopping, and these views cannot be beat. Our Airbnb was beautiful. It was about 45 minutes away from the western edge of Yellowstone in Island Park, Idaho. While the luxury cabin was wonderful and we cooked our nightly meals there, it was just a lot of driving to get to the park and back. In hindsight, I would stay closer to town in West Yellowstone. Today, we headed towards Whitefish, Montana. We stopped to have lunch in Missoula and then visited Garnet Ghost Town. We had never been to one and loved that we were able to walk around the restored town and see the interior of many buildings. A very cool experience for the entire family. The next two days were spent exploring Glacier National Park and the town of Whitefish, Montana. We took a very popular hike, Trail of the Cedars, to Avalanche Lake, to date my favorite hike. The views of Avalanche Lake at the end of this three mile hike were jaw dropping one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. Another must do in Glacier National Park is driving the Going to the Sun Road. Considered one of the most scenic drives in the world, it's also very high up and it's only completely open in the late summer months. Today we explored a quiet area of glacier called Two Medicine. This two mile trail had it all. Wildflowers, creeks, waterfalls, mountains, and not a single soul but us. It was the perfect goodbye to Glacier National Park. Another long drive today headed towards North Dakota. We stopped at Great Falls, Montana for lunch and checked out Giant Springs State Park and a hatchery. Most people have never even heard of Theodore Roosevelt National Park. From the visitor center, we hiked Painted Canyon Nature Trail and descended into the canyon. A fantastic hike. Be sure to drive the scenic south unit if you visit. We didn't have time. We had lunch in the charming western town of Medora, right next to the park. In hindsight, we should have stayed here to allow us more time to explore the Badlands area of North Dakota. After another long drive, we surprised the kids with a stay at Great Wolf Lodge. We relaxed, enjoyed the water park, and it was the perfect end to an already perfect trip. On our last day, we stopped at the largest mall in the country, Mall of America, before our flight. There was so much to do for the whole family here. I definitely recommend a stop. While this trip did have too many long driving stretches, the national parks we visited made it worthwhile. If you would like to plan a similar trip, give yourself more time, minimum of two weeks. Thanks for watching and hit subscribe for more new content.